Hi, welcome back to the shop. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Hornet from Artillery 3D. This is Artillery's more budget-oriented entry-level option meant to compete with the Ender 3s of the world. Full disclosure, Artillery did send me this printer for review, but they did not state any terms and conditions on how they wanted the review process to go. I even asked, and all they said was to let them know when the package arrived and let them know if I had any trouble with it. So this is going to be my 100% honest opinion on this machine and how it works. Spoiler alert, this thing's pretty darn good. The printer was packaged very well, and there was no shortage of good foam tightly securing the machine and its pieces from all sides. The assembly process was really simple and quick. And I have to say that the provided instruction manual is one of the best I've seen for a hobby level 3D printer. Let's talk about the machine specs and notable features. The build volume is 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters with an asterisk. I will get to that later. For the brains, it's got a 32-bit Artillery Ruby mainboard outfitted with Whisper Quiet TMC 2100 stepper drivers that are removable should you need to replace one in the future. This is a nice touch. The interface is your more traditional rotary knob push button style screen. This I imagine is a way to keep cost downs without affecting printing quality. They advertise its material compatibility is PLA, PETG, and TPU. I will be testing all three. It's got an ultra base style glass build surface fixed to an aluminum heat plate and carriage. For the extruder, they have gone with a Titan clone that feeds their proprietary integrated Bowden tube and electrical cable. The hot end is a modular V6 style nozzle and heat block with their own developed heat break. It is also fitted with two part cooling fans directing air to your print from two sides. Aesthetically, it's one of the more unique 3D printers I've seen, with the aggressive lines and angles in its bright yellow covers integrated into the frame and hot end that serves as a case for all of the electronics and as a cover and part cooling fan duct. It is fantastic looking and functional, but does it print as good as it looks? Let's find out. First, the build plate needed to be leveled. I followed the instructions and went through the level corners feature in the bed leveling menu. The manual does a really good job at explaining how to do this, even noting the type of paper to use and recommending going through the process a few times to ensure the best results. There is even a manual probing option enabled, which is not addressed in the manual or on the website. This could come in handy if the build surface happens to be warped. I'm going to skip this for now and start printing. I loaded up some Fire Engine Red PLA Plus from eSun. Then started the example print file on the included SD card. The first thing I noticed while it was printing is its speed. They seemed to have this thing cranked up to 11, but the movements were very smooth and didn't jerk the printer around. The print finished quickly, and as I would expect, with the build surface, the part stuck down very well. I let it cool for a few minutes, and afterwards, the part released very easily. Overall, I would say that the quality of the example print is good, but I do see some signs of over extrusion on the top layer. Now it was time to set up a slicer. The SD card includes three Cura profiles plus an install file for version 4.6.2. I opted to use a more up-to-date version to see if these profiles could still be installed, and to my surprise, they did. And again, the user manual did an outstanding job explaining how to set up the new printer and how to import the profiles. I started by slicing this chat cube using the normal profile, and it came out very nice. This is a very good looking chat cube. Next, it was time to try something a little more challenging, a good old Benchy. Besides a little bit of stringing in the door of the cabin, I would say that this is a very nice Benchy. I decided to try out the change filament feature and swap to this eSun Orange PLA Plus. 
And I gotta say, I think I have a new favorite color. My wife said that this color would make great traffic cones to go with our kids' toy dump truck. Boy, was she right. This little cone looks absolutely awesome in this color and our kid loves them. Then my wife said that I need to print something big, like max out the build volume of the printer. So I give you the cone of shame. This technically wasn't the max build volume. The closest I can get was 218.6 by 218.6 by 249.6 millimeters. I even tried slicing it in IdeaMaker and Prusa Slicer, and it came up to the same exact limits. I'm not sure why this happens, but it's negligible, and I'm not going to make a bother about it. This was not the first attempt at printing the Cone of Shame. This was. At about 8 hours or so into the print, it just stopped, and I couldn't restart it. It happened to be the second time this kind of failure occurred, the first one being a few minutes into a calibration cube. I chalked that off as the bad G-code, but for this to happen two times, I figured it had to be something wrong with the SD card, and that doesn't surprise me. Every 3D printer I've had and used have come with an SD card or thumb drive that failed within the first few months of use. So I went and bought a name brand quality SD card, and it never happened again. One thing I did want to try was to use a profile for the Artillery Genius, which is pre-installed with Cura. I've heard people try this and have gotten really good results out of it, so I wanted to give it a try for myself. And all I gotta say is, wow, this worked very well and produced one of the best looking benchies I've ever printed. I poked around and compared the two profiles and the only major differences that I could find are the print speed and the retraction settings. So I changed the Hornet profile to reflect those settings and I got really good results out of it. From here on, I just use the printer as I normally would. The main thing I've been doing with it is printing some prototype parts for a modification that I'm doing on my Sidewinder X1. I've also been helping a friend of mine modify his Ender 3, and here are a couple of the pieces for that. And for fun, I decided to print a Matter Hacker's Astronaut with zero infill and a slightly scaled up XYZ cube. This is just a small portion of items that I've printed with this machine, and I've got to say I've been very pleased with it. The print quality is excellent, and the reliability is really good. Besides the two little hiccups I had with the SD card, I've not had a print failure up to this point. In fact, I've gotten so confident in the machine that when I start a print, I don't even wait around and watch the first layer go down. I know that when it starts, it's going to finish. Up to this point, I've been using Cura to slice all my models, but I wanted to give my preferred slicer a try. Idea Maker. There are a few community provided profiles that you can download and I gave them a try and they do pretty good but I wanted to squeeze the best quality I can get out of this thing so I started from scratch and printed and tuned and printed and tuned and here's a couple examples of my best print. If you're an Idea Maker user or you want to give it a try and use this profile, I will leave a download link for it in the video description. Next, it was time to ditch the PLA and try some PETG. Artillery didn't provide any slicer profiles for PETG, so I just bumped the nozzle temp and the bed temperature to 235 degrees C and 80 degrees C respectively. And this is the result of that. It's a pretty good benchy, but there's definitely some more quality to be desired. And then downloaded this SD card case from Thingiverse, and it came out really nice, actually. The cards slide in nice. There's plenty of uh, clearance. They don't get stuck. The lid does fit a little tight, but once again, probably some more tweaking that could be done in the slicer to get better results for this. Lastly, I wanted to give Vase Mode a try, so I downloaded this trash can model from Thingiverse and printed it up and it turned out really nice. Plus, it's been a great way to keep a studio clean and collect up all the little clippings and purge lines and skirts that we all know and love so well. The last thing I wanted to print were some flexibles. I tried three different TPU filaments, this hatch box and pry line, both being a bit more on the stiff side, and this overture, which is much more flexible. Starting with the hatch box, I printed this Benchy. It's a good Benchy for being TPU printed on a Bowden tube machine. It's got some stringing in the cabin, but the overhangs are really good and the surface quality is impressive. You could even make out the little letters on the back of the boat. 
Next was this TPU from Pryline. I wanted to see how well it performed on something with a little more surface detail. This Lucky Cat model does a good job of testing just that. I printed this with no infill and only three walls, and the machine had no trouble with the overhangs and the surface detail is near perfect. All right, time to really test the boundaries with an extreme challenge, the super flexible TPU from Overture. And this is the result. Although the Benchy did successfully finish, it's not what I would call a good Benchy. The vertical surfaces look all right, but it really struggled on the overhang of the bow, in the cabin, and on the top surface. Time to wrap this up and give you my final thoughts. This machine has a great build quality and an overall attention to detail not normally found in 3D printers at this price range. It has the same main board and stepper drivers that they use in their flagship Genius Pro and X2 models. The ultra base style glass build surface that is fixed to the heat plate without the need for any type of clamps to hold it down is a great touch. I was able to achieve great print quality, especially with PLA. Out of the box, it pumped out very good looking parts. And with just a few little bits of tuning, I was able to get near perfect looking and dimensionally accurate parts. I found it to be a very easy machine to operate, even choosing it over my X1 at times for the sheer sake of simplicity. The menus on the screen are easy to navigate, and I never found myself having to struggle through the menus for a function or a setting. On the other hand, it doesn't have an easy belt tensioner for the Y axis, but does include one on the X axis. I think this is a feature that, if it's going to be included, should be on both the X and Y axes. The plastic lever arm in the extruder really should be metal. It's a part that's easy to break if you're not careful and should be upgraded in the future. Stay tuned for a how-to video for that exact upgrade. The most insignificant yet frustrating complaint I have is the SD card. When receiving a piece of equipment with the quality electronics on the inside, a quality SD card is a must. If I can give a suggestion to artillery, it would be to set a new industry standard and include quality name brand SD cards or thumb drives with their printers. As a customer, I would gladly pay the extra money to have this, since eventually I will end up spending the extra money to replace it with one that I can trust and count on. Don't worry, I didn't forget about the rainbow colored elephant in the room, the extruder cable. I have seen many reviews that have a negative opinion of it, and I feel like this may be a misunderstanding of the intended function rather than being a poor design choice. One of the complaints I hear is that it makes it more difficult to do hot end maintenance, like clearing a clog without actively heating the hot end. Here's a quick solution I found for that. Turn on the printer, heat up the nozzle to 240C, then switch off the power, remove the cable from the hot end. If there's still filament loaded, it will come out easily. Then get one of these nozzle needles and push it through the top, wiping the excess off with a towel as you pull it back through. Repeat a few times to ensure you have pushed the clog completely through. This takes less than 30 seconds and has worked for me the few times I've encountered a clog. I've also heard that you are unable to do a cold pull. This is completely false. If you loosen the tension on the extruder, disconnect the cable from the hot end and pull the slack through the cable, it will give you enough filament to grip on for the cold pull. I honestly like the design of the extruder cable, mainly for the ease of maintenance and modularity. Being able to remove it and work on the hot end without having the electrical cables hanging off the component is much more convenient and you are less likely to damage any of the wires connected to it. If you plan to use this in a situation where printer downtime is an issue, for example a print farm or a school, the extruder cable allows the ability to quickly change out the hot end so you can get your printer back up and running. And you can perform whatever repairs you need to do without having a printer down. This is a surprisingly good machine, and I think Artillery did a great job with it. Adding stiff competition to the hobby 3D printer market, especially at this price point. Its regular price is $209 US dollars, but at the time of filming this, you could find it on Amazon and direct from Artillery for $179. I will leave both links in the video description. Going into this review, I was honestly expecting to talk about how the Hornet is really going to be best for an entry-level 3D printing hobbyist. The more I used it, the more I realized that this neat little guy is a great addition to any printing arsenal. If you are experienced and you want to add a reliable machine that you can count on, this would be a great one for you. If you are looking to outfit your classroom with a few affordable machines that will hold up to some teenage abuse, this is a great one for you. If you have a print farm and you need something modular that can be fixed with minimal downtime, you guessed it, this is a great one for you. If you have no idea what you are doing and you just want to be able to print some fun doohickeys to put on your desk, i.e. my wife, this is definitely for you. Long story short, I give the Artillery Hornet two golden thumbs up. Thank you for sticking with me to the end. If you like this video and you want to see more videos like it, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Happy 3D printing, and as always, thanks for watching.